So welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers, uh, June 7th, right? Yep. And yep. we've got uh, real quality here tonight. <laughs> Not a lot of quantity. <laughs> um, so, hey, yeah, baby. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, Thank you. Ongoing project here. Um, I'm I'm gonna I, I'm just gonna sort of uh, mention a few things that we've been working on, and uh, Chris Sloan couldn't be here tonight. He's uh, he said he's going to the desert, uh, which sounds oh. like a good thing in Utah to be doing. Um, it's the sky is orange here in New York. Um, uh. it has been all day. Um, we we uh, have some here. of it here. We yeah. have some of it. It's terrible. It's it's pretty terrible. Yeah. Anyway. Um, but one of the things, one of the things Chris Sloan has done and has started to do, and will be doing, um, is to think about thinking partners in terms of a project that he does a uh, tech masters students in Ireland um, in the month of July, and he's and they do a wicked problem in um, in it in mm. education mm. and um one of the things he thought they could do is create um hi marina hi. um one of the things he thought they could do is they could when they they look at each other's writing mm -hmm. um and they put their their own writing up on now comment they could create stakeholders like the principal of the building, like uh, school room. You, you can imagine like a, a student or something. And the stakeholders could give them different perspectives on what they're writing. So we started building um, stakeholders as a thinking partner idea. So that's one idea that's floating out there. Paul, oh, is that, can I ask a question? Yeah, sure, please. Oh, go ahead, Bonnie. You well, go I, I want to tell you that's one of the um, main staples of journalism in finding the answers to the questions is we ask students to list the stakeholders of a story thought, just the beginning thoughts of a story. Who would the stakeholders be? So that's very interesting you went there. Yeah. Paul, would that, are the stakeholders sort of a macro group a subset of which are principal, department chair, coach, whomever in, in within the school community. And so the presumption is that these represent individual thinking partners and the AI both assemble some understanding of those personas and their expertise and give feedback in those voices the same way it's doing for every other yes. thinking partner we create. Yes, that's the idea. But I think the idea mm -hmm. of thinking through who that thinking partner is and making it work is mm -hmm. It's an interesting thinking process, right? Yeah, yeah because, uh, you know, it's kind of opaque, you know, like it, it's really easy to imagine like, well, I've got this project with the basketball or the volleyball coach and there's a guy who wants to be on the girls team or something. I, you can imagine the complexity, but if I was making a thinking partner that were a co was a coach and able to speak to the things I'm curious about, it would all the backstory would be really interesting and important to sort of in present in order to get that role up and running. Yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah. So, I think the kids are going to think I think that through. They're, they're obviously doing it in, your, in the context you're describing, Bonnie, where they're thinking about the stakeholder as, a, as an audience or as a contributor. And who, who would you question? Who would right. have an interest in who would weigh in on the thought process to get you through to an action or not? So it's more than yeah. an audience. It's more like yeah, okay. it, it is know, more like a thinking partner. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, very much so. And uh -huh. and yeah. to action. And I think uh, one of the sessions we talked about that, that this could be more than just looking through literary lenses, but what, how, how do people build toward action from literature to action? You know, when we talk about um, lifting the words off the page and bringing them to life. Cool. So um, that, that 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 conversation led me to, and and then David, you sent me a long email about what you had been reading, and uh, looked at. Um, we have no moat, and we can look at that. But it started me thinking about um, how we can use. We always knew this, but we just haven't done it much. 
how we can use now comment for our own writing and and start to build thinking partners to give us feedback on our writing as opposed to thinking partners to give us feedback on litter, on things we're reading right um, so I think that's opened up a, an interesting part of my brain, and I hope for us that can be an interesting thing to kind of experience. Um, so we're going to look at that. Uh, Marina, how are you? Do you want Good. To okay. It's just a few of us here tonight, but um, mm -hmm. welcome, welcome. Um, Marina will be doing the work with me this uh, July, so with the teachers. Oh. Um, they, they're not quite teachers yet. They're too young to be teachers, uh, students. Um, so we could leap to that if if you would like. Um, oh, trying to think of what else. It was really interesting to see how many um, thinking partners are up on now comment now. I was like, ooh, woo, woo, woo. So here one of the yeah uh, bonnie since you're here let me you're you're going to be like our first example of this but and this is going to be hard to get our heads around a little bit but let me just try to explain some of the infrastructure that we built very recently not quite finished yet but when you have a group like bonnie has a group that has all of her students in it and all of her mm -hmm. students created thinking partners and we were mm -hmm. kind of confused about how to have them look at each other's. Anyway, mm. We were just starting it, Paul. You know, we were yeah. breaking the bank and then so, school started. Yeah. Forward, so. Let me not go there. And let me just say uh, what, what, what happens now. <laughs> what happens now is that um, they, you can see, you as the administrator of that group, can see all of their thinking partners that get created. Nobody else can. Oh, good. They, they mm -hmm. can see their own. And then you can go in and you can give access to your group, any of those thinking partners. Oh, right? okay. So groups could have their own thinking partners. There's a digital discourse project going on in the, with the writing project. And so we've created um, thinking partners for that group. And then when we want to make them public for everybody, we kind of make them public for everybody. Okay. And Great. part of what I was getting worried about, and even last week we looked at seven summarizing kinds of things, right? Mm -hmm. And that felt like too many and confusing to a brand new user. So I'm trying to limit it to three in each of the categories, um, which is maybe still too much. But anyway, <laughs> the other piece is I created another group that you're all in. Um, anybody who comes here on Wednesday night called Thinking Partners. Um, and um, so and so, any of the ones we've been exploring, playing with, they appear on your list. And then there's a little public beside the ones that everybody can see. So just to say, trying to figure this out, and we won't have it exactly right, but um, we're kind of doing that. Um, so Paul, you're, a, you're like a web administrator. I guess so. You're yeah. you're doing the well, one to many membership registration management stuff on the back end of now comment just to kind of facilitate all this work. Is that Yeah, and I, I work with a, yeah. a, a tech guy who yeah. helps me figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But mm -hmm. absolutely. It's not small. That's a that's a big lift. Well, but yeah, but so yeah. I mean I think I think a real uh, I am impressed with how to how to keep the human element in all of this and the architectures we build around the AI are, are going to be very yeah. important. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, the other piece I, I, I will say very fast, but and then we can look at it maybe another time when Bob Montgomery is back around us. He po was pointing us to, um, to a, uh, a book called Reading for Understanding. And they just published their third, and West Ed published this book, I think they're th the third edition of it in mm -hmm. April. But, and I had read pieces of the er earlier versions, but anyway, I've, I've been sort of diving into that. And they do something called, believe it or not, think alouds, right? Mm -hmm. and, and it's so interesting to me that 
AI understands think aloud, right? Like you can tell a, a thinking part, you can tell AI, do a think aloud for me. And it, and it, and it, it talks out loud about its process that it's going through, right? And the way it's in the book is that teachers do think alouds. They say, hey, I'm going to chunk this text right now. Notice how I'm stopping at the comma. And then I'm going to think about what this part of the sentence means. So chunking is one of the activities that they do a think aloud about. And then they ask the students to do think alouds while they're doing their reading as well. Right? Mm -hmm. makes, that makes some sense? Nice. Yeah. So I, I did make a chunking one, <laughs> right? Or it's called breaking it down. And the trick of it, it, though, is that just like you don't want the teacher to go on too long the way I am right now, but um, you, you don't want the teacher to, like, do the whole paragraph. And at first it was trying to do the whole paragraph. I think I trained it to do just do the first sentence mm -hmm. and then tell us to finish it, right? So it chunks the first sentence. It, and it tells you how it's doing it. And then it says, okay, now you get in there and do it yourself. So anyway, mm. I, and then that's the only one I've done, but they have other kind of analytical processes for readers that we're going to kind of adopt and, and see how we can make it work. So those are some, some of the projects I've been messing with and thinking wow. about. Um, so I want to propose that we actually do some well, actually, why don't we go look at, um, go over to picnic table four, if you don't mind. It's right over to your right. <laughs> I've moved a few things around here, but you'll see there are two documents here. One of them, um, Marina and I are on, and then let's, let's look at that one first. So click on that one. You'll need to log in to now comment. And... David, would you mind sort of talking us through what you were going to do here? And then we'll look at the writing you did about it afterwards. Sure. Uh, and then, uh, and or at some point we could stop um, Marina and uh, Bonnie, you let us know when. And, and, and let you just kind of go in and read a little bit and make some comments. But David, go ahead. What is this document? And... Yeah. Um, yeah. Let me, let me share it just because I just realized that somebody might be watching this and wonder what the hell we're talking about. Okay. Hmm. So, uh, let me see if I want to pull this up onto another screen there okay. and keep this one going. Um, to give you just some background to this, the document that Paul's opened up is a, is a, is a, as a full, is a post that was released about a month ago and claims to have been an internal leaked memo from a Google engineer mm. about, and this is, and, and I, I should preface this by saying that when the AI stuff landed in our computers in our heads back in December and January, I was kind of overwhelmed by it and excited uh, in part because I didn't have no idea that natural language and natural language processing giving us a textual means to engage a machine would really show up sort of as fully formed as it did. Now it's very rough and there are all kinds of problems and hallucinations and whatnot, but the fact that you can get in and play as robustly as we are doing so quickly just kind of blew me away. And I was really curious and excited to see how these systems work. And the goal of course is not just to noodle around, but I think of the domain expertise that's on this me in this meeting, that's in your school, that's in the National Writing Project Network, and so forth. There's just as an, a powerful amount of information that, if it could be organized as a kind of some of the background reference information to give an AI the ability to give feedback, it seems like it would be an extraordinarily useful tool. And Paul, what you're doing with Thinking Partners and assembling these contextual and narrative lenses and introducing us to these, so to speak, pre-built scaffolds and doing it in the context of these architectures has been really interesting to me. And I've been trying to understand how they work. And so you got to understand. Uh, 
care. I've worked with technologists for a long time and like doing that a lot, building web things. That's why I mentioned to you, Paul, boy, Paul, you're a web administrator. But getting these things built into the and out in the world and having them be accessible and inspiring and give people the means to get going on them has always been very mo motivating for me. So I wanted to understand this to the extent I could, and it occurred to me that I might be able to use the AI tools to essentially translate complex technical documentation for me mm. instead of me doing traditional research. So this was an article that explained something that seems kind of foundational these days about where large language models are going. And Bob, and um, sorry, yeah, I just Bob. wanted to go. Let, let, there, um, right, right, bes underneath where you are, there's a, a. You can link to that article if you'd like to. Marina, if you could move down a little bit, maybe he could see it then. Yeah, there you go. You see it there? Okay, cool, cool. So, David, um, uh, with my interruption, can can we ask you to shift into um, you as a reader? Um, how yeah. did you, how did you read this article, and 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 how did you use a thinking partner to do it? Good. Is that okay? Um, yeah. Yeah, of course. Um, a little bit of a little bit of background. When I first started this and reached out to folks in the writing project, and Paul and you and I connected, we talked about these role playing ideas. We looked a little bit at character AI. I think that was talked about in here for a while, and the whole idea of, of creating these different personas was very compelling as a way to, to, to work. And um, I was, I was after sort of the idea of a writing coach. Cause I thought, gosh, you know, the idea of one-to-one -one tutoring is suddenly right in our laps. What if that coach had the expertise that um, I recall from some of my best teachers and what I tried to do as a writing instructor and a teacher myself. And um, that still remains a goal. Um, and yet it was, it's not been so simple to sort of figure out how to aggregate and pull all that information. Like Bonnie, you're an expert, you're writing a PhD. What if there's a thinking partner that can embody and reflect all the domain expertise you have on this, this vertical conversation you're having about STEM and equity and access and so forth. Um, and sort of assembling that as a cogent writing partner, as a decent sounding board, that can articulate really specific calls to the database and references and so forth and create a really rich, comprehensive, responsive feedback um, environment seems very powerful. Mm. So how does that work? What's going on? And, and increasingly, it became clear that the LLMs were, you know, they're scouring billions of pieces of information from the open Internet. These tools are pattern generators. They look at what word ought to follow the last thing. They don't think in terms of values. They don't think in terms of images. They think in terms of what came before. And the prompting helps to assemble a proper context. And then oftentimes we're finding that with the right prompting, the, the, its ability to aggregate contextual information from the wider web gives us a really thoughtful understanding. And then often it doesn't. And so there's some puzzling stuff in there. So as a reader, Paul, mm -hmm. I read this document, which is an internal document from an engineer describing the competitive landscape that Google is in relative to Microsoft and Bing and others. And he's making the point that these large tech giants that have the means to go out and buy GPUs and have server farms that can scrape the internet at great expense, um, that those things are, are very useful as a baseline, but increasingly, open source language models that can go vertical or get very disciplined in what they explore are going to be increasingly useful to the field. And I think, and so I'm reading that and I'm also keeping in mind the kind of thing you're doing, Paul, and what's happening in these discussions and what each of us in these conversations are doing. We're trying to bang on these systems to get them to engage and get us further along in our use cases and in our interaction with our peers or and our own sort of quests for a certain kind of information. And um, I'm trying to understand technically, what are the workflows, what are the project steps that would be involved in curating a disciplinary focus for something mm -hmm. as precise and as useful as the teaching of writing or pick your subject. Any of you could have your disciplinary focus of choice. Bob, you were describing your focus with your uh, the coaching and the leadership development stuff you're doing with your 
your colleagues in your in your program and everyone's got a lens and each lens brings with it a body of information and it seems increasingly clear that um that inference learning that's all kinds of technical terms i'm learning as a reader so i'm learning taxonomies right i'm learning technical terms and i'm asking questions of the systems to make my vocabulary better and i'm trying to glom on to sections in these texts that seem especially opaque and confusing and asking the API, API the, 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 the AI to give me a technical person's rendition for a, for a, for a K-12 teacher, like make it readable for me, asking for a translation, asking, asking it. I'm not just hitting a Google search and getting yet another URL to try to parse. I'm including sort of essentially Lexile information, right? I'm a teacher. I'm a person with some education and some background in schools and literacy please unpack this technical language for me so again i can understand the foundational concept so, so i'm reading I, i'm so reading for that you start so a couple things um you created an nlp and llm expert yeah and, and so with that in mind i thought oh a thinking partner maybe i can make a thinking partner who's an expert in machine learning and natural language processing because these are the disciplines that together the computer science disciplines that are driving this ai movement, machine learning, um, the machine learning sort of emerged dramatically around data science and the emergence of statistics in the wider web and the distributed web over the past 10 years and the ability to aggregate all that. Social media is built on machine learning of preferences and so forth. So David- the Natural you, language processing is assembling this this, this, uh, yeah. this language-based interface. Yes. So Sorry, did Bob. you um, create the thinking partner with all yeah. of that language. Um, can we see the thinking partner he created and how he used that to get to, because I was reading some of what- I, I will look for it, yes, go ahead. Okay. Yeah, and you know, and that's, and Bonnie, it's in, Bonnie, it's interesting, you know, you talked about this stakeholder question and I feel a little bit like a ninth grader trying to describe, if I had to describe, okay, I want the principal. Right. What would I say the principal stakeholder definition is? You know, um, that ninth grader might not have a fully featured understanding of what the state, what the principal could bring to the conversation, mm -hmm. and that ninth grader might describe it as uh, a person who runs the school. Or I'm not. I'm just being a little facetious mm -hmm. here, but you get my point. For me to describe what a machine learning or natural language processing expert is, in order to give the AI enough information, is is I think fairly limited. That said. Certainly, the system knows what it's looking for when it says, oh, I need to go get some information about being a natural language processing expert. So I'm always puzzled by that gap. But my there's yeah, there it is. Um, so that's what I wrote. Do you, you know, do you want to read it? Do you mind? Can you see it? Uh, I'm going to have one of these. Huh? It's short. It's really short. I thought it was a lot more information than. You know, I probably should go back go and go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. I, and so I've got a, it's not large enough here. Let me get it over. I need oh, to open my own. Thank you, partner. I'll read it. So it's um, act like the chief AI researcher and machine learning expert at one of the leading companies working in this emerging sector. For example, a leading AI scientist at OpenAI or Stable Diffusion or Google DeepMind or Anthropo. How do you say anthropic? Anthropic. Anthropic, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Provide digestible translation on complex. Oh, that's a good on complex topics, designs, mm. and computational systems. So help to help. lay people to understand the design mm. choices and potential outputs and impacts of these new tools. Pay can have uh, pay specific attention to the details related to open source projects. Good. and kind uh, kinds of res resources aggregated by and available on Hugging Face so interested users can learn about how to work and with the training sets and smaller scale LLM demonstrations. Yeah, you packed a lot in there. Yes, you did. And But it sounds like language that AI would know and be, you know. Right almost privy to because uh, okay. somebody like me, I wouldn't even know um, what happened, you know, I wouldn't even yeah. know how to put those words in the sentences. I know how to say those words. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's a good point. So 
to that, to your point, I mean, if that's the reference that the AI is digesting, it's already going to be putting feedback uh, out that's highly specialized in ways that may not be that useful for me or for anyone else. So can in we look at, look at how it did in from your sure. opinion? Yeah. As a reader, um, yeah. yeah. Did it help you? <laughs> me? Um, yeah. Well, oh, without the information? Oh, are you talking I'm, to Dave? I'm sorry. Yeah. To David. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you know, I picked paragraph 38, you know, this, yep. there, that's an example when I was reading through, you know, when you go through these things every week, there's another example of some working group that's made an advance on working with language models. Mm -hmm. And this one references low rank adaption of language models. And I was like, all right, what does that mean? Um, and, uh, and so I, you know, in my, I say low rank adaption of language models appears to be a central design element in making LLM updates and versioning feasible and more efficient in terms of cycle time, expense, and order of effort. So you made sense you know, of so it yourself. Yeah. yeah. I tried to, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then my question was, you know, I, I tried to sort of summarize it as best I could. And then I said, can you explain how low, um, low rank adaption of LLMs works? Mm -hmm. What are the steps, and um, machine learning or natural language processing experts, what are the steps experts do to establish a low rank adaption methodology and workflow. Um, so I was trying to approach, I was trying to grab some vocabulary and then use it and see what it said. Now it was very specialized. And then it comes at me with, um, these are all AI responses. And it was, you know, I, I, I looked at this and did a couple choices and thought this, I'll use this one. Um, so it, I felt it was helpful you know, in terms of giving me a foothold on it. Again, I'm using this, I'm using this thinking partner as a research collaborator mm -hmm. to uh, make complex texts for me a little more understandable. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's my goal, I think. Um, and I'm trying to use the professional terms or the technical terms in the discipline to ask information of the discipline, so to speak, so I can understand it better. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not doing writing per se, I'm just trying to increase my understanding. Mm -hmm. So it's a research partner, I guess you could say. But you, you but then you did question your own, you questioned the response, right? Yeah. A couple of times. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I go through and it's like, yeah, so the, like the next one down, what does it mean to capture the dimension of the target data? Right. Provide Good. examples of text-based content, books, collections, criticism, scholarly, yeah. say, in your answer, you know? Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm, tr I'm pushing at it. So, David. Yes. Did it answer you correctly? Was it correct or was your further questioning to dig deeper in the understanding or was it to challenge the response that was given by AI? I, I, because this language is like, I don't know what it, the heck it's talking about, but yeah, I do I, understand A, B, C, D, the way it lists. Yeah, that's right. I understand yep. that. You know, that's a good question, Bonnie. I, I was doing some work on a, on a similarly technical article that Paul posted today or recently along the same lines. And it's, it's, it's another example of a really discipline specific research article, which is totally incomprehensible to me, but I'm banging on it. And um, I found that the responses it was giving were kind of useless. It was picking up on the hugging face thing. It was repeating mm -hmm. pattern recognition. It was not respond, it was clearly not responding. In this little sequence we're working on here, I was willing to follow it along. I picked up on a technical term it used. I said, give me some more information. I'm taking it at, a, I'm taking it face value that it's working. now." To your point, I don't really know if it's just making stuff up. I'm taking for granted that it isn't because to me, I have some expertise or some understanding and it's it's sounding OK. I'm not validating it. I'm not able to see the minutes of the public meeting or whatever I might do to get someone, an outsider who's not an AI, say, yeah, that's exactly right. Or this is the way to do it when I think of information literacy. Um, so I'm I, to your point, in that instance, I'm just following through because I'm accepting what it's giving me and I'm trying to refine it. But there were places in a similar sort of query string where I was like, wait a minute, that's not helpful. You're not, 
answering what I want to get at. So the A, B, C, D was disrupted by a, what it was clearly a less useful response in that other in instance. So it goes both ways. The underpinning here is that I don't really know this stuff at all. I'm just trying to, um, well, I'm trying to follow it. Got it. And and just pulling back for a second, just to say that yeah. thank you, and, and thank you. I I, I want to say what what we are able to observe here, and it'd be great if some of the rest of us can do this too. Is like a reader trying to make this work for himself, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so the idea that you would ask it a question, well, so just to identify, you puzzled it through yourself first. It, you know, there could have been somebody doing that with you, but there wasn't. <laughs> then you asked it a question. Then you asked it a question. You you asked it. Yeah. You, you yeah. To your point, it. yeah, and that's yeah. something a reader could do. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, and just to follow on your point and also on Bonnie's, if you scroll down, I kept I kept pushing at it, and you can see in the next question, I spun it directly it's at 40? the context yeah. where we're at. Um, no, I think it's still the it's we're still in question thirty eight. Oh, got it, got it. Yes, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. And so I, 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 to Bonnie's point, I, I was sort of following the line of questioning, right? Mm -hmm. And then there's a reply on a reply on a reply, and then then I turn the whole question like. Hey, if you had a collection of, and this is where it's contextual, yeah. if you have 500 samples of K-12 writing as the quote target data, and each finished piece included statements from the writer about his or her piece, as well as two comments from peers, how would this work to support a low rank adaptation process, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to sort of, I'm accepting the terms. I'm trying to set its response in the context that I'm interested in. And, you know, it, 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 you know, and then further down in the case of student writing, after that data has been labeled and processed, various supervised, you know, so it, it sort of digests it and situates yeah. it a little bit. Yeah. That's, and David, that's what I like about it, because really the more input you give it, the better yeah. the answer becomes. Um, yeah. it, it's like initially it's just framing it, like you said, off of word recognition, what what would come before and after the word. But once it starts being fed more and more information, it starts gobbling it up and really um, is becoming saturated in the knowledge very quickly. And it's able yeah. to give out a better response because I, when I asked that question, I had already read down to that. K to oh. yeah, yeah. I saw yeah. it changed. So yeah, and yeah, go ahead, Paul. No, no, no yeah, I, I want to leave enough room to get back to um, yeah. since since Bob is here and we we talked about you before you came, but to get back to the um, the uh, reading for understanding um, because you know we're we're dealing with reading here at a very high level, yet it's still reading to solve a problem, right? Um, you're you're working through something and so i think i think it's an interesting model i do want to look at the other thing that you can model for us here tonight which is a piece of writing and some thinking partners that gave you feedback and yep. i need to move over a little bit <laughs> can i do it uh where is it i need to click in here first One sorry that dude's head yeah, click on click on hey. the, the head here where <laughs> hey, david hey david move down That's a little me. Bit. there hey, you go david. <laughs> yeah, click on that, and you yeah. will come up with yeah. the next thing to look at, which is your writing. It was it was an email to me about this, and thank you for letting us just sort of uh, play with yeah. this as a piece of writing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So to give you guys a little bit of backstory on this piece here, mm -hmm. um. Paul, Paul emailed me and said, hey, I read that thing about the moat, the Google thing. I'd like to put it up and we can talk about what it might mean. And I, in my response, I said, hey, that's great. And then I gave Paul some background on where I'm at and how this thing was emerging. And so this is my writing. In, so what we're looking email. at now, yes, what we're looking at now is how now comment, you can put your own writing in and use it, use thinking partners to give you feedback on your own writing. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe just read the first two paragraphs or so. Is that sure? Get a flavor. Yeah. Good. Here are Great. some thoughts and a few links that may provide some more context for what I'm starting to do with now comment and the related tech details, which are largely beyond me. In short, I was starting to use the notion of a thinking partner, a thinking partner persona as an ML slash NLP expert, 
to see if I could make myself smarter on a technical subject where I have no expertise, no experience or aptitude beyond my curiosity and conviction that these tools and the inductive way of thinking they promote for the moment are going to become how we evolve and adapt to the ever-changing, ever-expanding information environment we are clearly living in now. Mm -hmm. As a non-technical person, I'm trying to understand ML, NLP concepts, and system-level characteristics as design principles in order that they might be applied to familiar workflows and content generation I can recognize, which could then inform a chatbot that coaches for student voice specifically, say, and understands how to develop a writer versus improve the text according to rote categories. A steep hill to climb with or without AI. Uh, all right. Um, and uh, just some playing around that Bob and I had, had done with other documents, just to say that what we're, what, what you'll notice is that I put, I uh, didn't count them here, but what, six or so paragraphs mm -hmm. into one paragraph mm -hmm. um, so that the AI would look at that whole chunk of text instead of just mm -hmm. one paragraph at a time. Just a, a, just a sort of technical note there. Um, I want to look first at Jill S.'s, Sadronsky. Um, uh, her, she came in, I think, uh, this afternoon sometime. She was hoping to come tonight, but she at least did this. And she responded to your first, where was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Acronym. Sentence two in the first paragraph. Yeah, no, mm -hmm. what the acronyms yeah. Uh, yeah. Bonnie, would you mind reading that? Can sure. you see it? Yeah. yeah. Um, so Jill's question, what does ML and NLP stand for? And he, she used the background knowledge builder as her thinking partner. So um, sentence one, I was starting to use the notion of a thinking partner persona as ML slash NLP expert. This sentence is important as it introduces the idea of using machine learning and natural language processing to facilitate self-growth through learning a subject one has no experience with. Now, did it just hear you say that, David, or you told <laughs> me at one point? Because you just said that out loud, yeah. and yeah, you already I, wrote it. I, so again, I, yeah. now, now, sorry, go ahead. No, what were you going to say? <laughs> I, I just so I, so she Jill is using a. She's not using a. Um, a thinking partner designed for a writer yet, but she's still getting the information she needs here, right? To understand what you're writing, I think. So Absolutely. I, yeah, yeah. You want um, the next sentence? Uh, let's go to the background knowledge. Oh, okay, the background, oh, is at the bottom. So yeah. what is sentence one and sentence two talking about? What, what, where did that come from? But it picked up, it's designed to pick up a, a few sentences that are important and say oh. why they're important. Okay. And pull it all together as background knowledge. Okay, so the background knowledge, ML and NLP refers to the application of machine learning algorithms and techniques to natural language processing, NLP tasks. ML's ability to learn from data makes it useful for multiple NLP tasks, including natural language understanding, speech recognition, test, text classification, and pattern recognition. Together, they can be used to produce efficient and effective solutions to complex NLP tasks. Well, by golly, I think it got it. <laughs> well, it's interesting. The background knowledge is answering Jill's question directly. The, mm -hmm. uh, the other sen sentence grabbers um, are interesting contextual reflections of the of the question but the background knowledge of course responds directly to her question right it sort of gives a mm -hmm. gives a, it, it gives an answer are are we able yeah Dave, go ahead to, to your prompt at the title of this article are we do we have any evidence that it could make yourself smarter and and so can how, what would the thinking partner prompt be that you would imagine could give you feedback that would lead to your growth as a writer? Uh, you know, Bob, I don't know. I, you, you may have come in afterwards. Bonnie's first question when we started this, um, Paul was moving us all, moving us into this stuff was, hey, can I see what David wrote 
as a way. I, I wrote an NLP and a, one of the, yeah. my thinking partner is an M, ML slash NLP expert. Mm -hmm. And I had to make up some framing language around that. Yeah. Um, on anticipating exactly what you're saying. It's like my hope is that after going through these iterative cycles on these complex test texts, I'm going to come away with a better understanding of terminology, better understanding of some processes. And to the extent I don't feel tricked, and I think I don't feel tricked on much of it because I suspect these some of these things are out there in the wider web and they represent bodies of information that have reference points. I'm learning, but it's really it's no different than sitting in the library with encyclopedias when I was a kid to some degree, right? Mm -hmm. um, it's just that they are taking this much more okay. adaptive sort of incremental sort of frame now. Mm -hmm. So I think to answer your question, I, I guess I guess I would say I'm getting smarter because and this yeah. this letter I sent to Paul was an effort to explain to myself and use Paul as a listener and 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 thank him for the feedback by explaining what, where my thinking is, right? So, you know, yeah. this, this, this text represents my thinking to yeah. some degree and, and, and it's, it's informed by this stuff. So yeah, I think it's working. <laughs> and I think I miss, I think I slightly slipped into a kind of a implicit bias around wanting to find out if the, if the thinking partner can make me better at anything, not necessarily <laughs> understand. Yeah. I get that it can summarize yeah. or, you know, give me new knowledge. I get that awareness, all that. But I'm trying to figure out: yeah. can it, can it build skill? Can I de not knowledge? Can I develop a skill through my relationship to this intelligence or resource? Well, here's a here's an actionable thing that sort of speaks to that. And um, you you might recall the the last the earlier in this discussion we were talking about the, how I spun the question back to say, hey, so say there were five thousand writing samples, what would you do? Um, in terms of actions in the world, as opposed to just acquiring knowledge, I'd love to think that there's a cohort of people, some of whom could be on this call, who participate in building a, la a language model or a fine tuning set that, that gathers together really good information. And I would like to understand how to create a fine tuning language set. And I've learned a little bit about that. But to your point, would this culminate in action in the world? Would this culminate in putting together something could i learn a skill to to participate in the development of a fine tuning data set that could contribute to an open source language model i'd like to think yes because that's why i'm reading this so that's an objective i have in the world and i'm trying to give myself enough information to see if that's doable that's that's a goal you know you know I'm, I, and and what i heard you say there and what i've been thinking is that um you're you're learning what the problems are right Mm -hmm. what the questions are and, and yeah. almost like we're, we're learning what kind of team we need to to put together to do to accomplish the goal that you just said right and and mm -hmm. we're and we're getting clear on why we want to do that so mm -hmm. yeah i think if that's worth but yeah, yeah. yeah and bob back to you back to your you know you've described um some real specific intention with the context that you've been working on with your colleagues and trying to get them to understand and position certain disciplinary focus. Is that an expression of you being able to sort of act in the world with, with this tool helping to facilitate that? Am I putting words in your head or is that, is that re relevant? I'm recalling what you were sharing yeah. last time. Yeah. And, and, and Paul, you shared something with me that looked really cool, which I didn't really have a chance to process and maybe we can, we can look at it fast. Yeah. Let's, let's, let's look at it. Cause it okay. Okay. Good. Goes to David's, Asking. Good. Um, l let me just quickly <laughs> quickly mention here that um, there is feedback that um, I, I had archived it, so it wasn't obviously here. But the, um, using Christina Cantrell's Yogi um, example, and then going through and figuring it out, so it gives him it gives David feedback in terms of alignment, precision, and sequencing, and. Mm -hmm. Do you want to say quickly, David, how you felt about that feedback that you got as a writer? Yeah, yeah. I, I um, I got. You know, I wrote this note to Paul that we're reading here, and then I went and looked at the link, and then I realized that he had sort of set up uh, the Yogi responder, and 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 I suddenly found myself as the writing student. Um, I've not put a bunch of original writing of my own 
into one of these systems yeah. for feedback. I've used sort of prompts and I've structured characters and I've, you know, tried to think structurally about this stuff, but I've not yet done what happens in a writing circle where you just put your writing into the circle, you get feedback, you assess. And so I suddenly, and it was really delightful to find myself reading this stuff thinking, oh, it's talking about my writing. And it was really pleasant and it was, uh, and it was interesting. And some of the comments were uh were striking you know uh in in, the, in ha and so it was quite affecting in a nice way and i i was reminded of bonnie your description of how your how your students are working with it and the energies they get from it i listened to you describe certain interactions and i couldn't really know what they were doing because we didn't get into it but you know we know when we see or when we feel we feel interested or we can tell somebody is interested and in this instance i was very interested as a as a as a as a student, so to speak, whose writing was being reviewed by a coach. Mm -hmm. And that was that was a nice position to find myself in. I could see how your students, Bonnie, would be moved by that. And uh, getting in a rhythm with it, I was actually, when I read it, I thought of your students, Bonnie. I thought of, I wonder what it's going to feel like when uh, students develop the habit to have this internal peer review, let's call it that, yes. happening in real time as part of their own workflow. They, they get used to text, they get used to whatever. Right. This is going to become a thing they get used to if it's yep. su sufficiently supported. And y you all are doing that. And, and um, higher order thinking. <laughs> yeah, and, that's and, right. And it's rich, too. Yeah. So as, as this is spinning and it's, it's coming up, um, Bob, I, I did a sort of dive, a few dives into the um, reading for understanding. Uh, the third edition that you guys just published recently, right? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, okay. So um, coming back to the first paragraph of Metamorphosis here, and I, I'm pretty sure it's here. Yes. Um, here it is. So I, I mentioned some of this earlier, but let me just, and so it's, it's right, uh, it, it's called a, breaking it down. So one of the, one of the strategies that they use a thinking, um, too many words thinking, uh, <laughs> what's the, what, what do you think out loud? Uh, what's it called? Text the text or think aloud, either think one. Think aloud, sorry. Yeah. So think aloud is a very important part of, of what they describe teachers do. Um, who are using this approach, the apprenticeship approach. And so, and interestingly, asking AI to do a think aloud is, is a, a real possible thing to do also. It, it does interesting things when you ask it to do that. Um, so I work over quite a bit of time trying to think about how to have it make it do a think aloud the way a teacher would, so that you don't like do a think aloud for the whole thing but you mm. just do the beginning part and then you invite other people to do it. And, and so you have the think aloud and then you have the strategy or the cognitive process that you want to be teaching, right? Fair enough. So we're first paragraph here and maybe I'll just read it. Um, says, uh, uh, we can break down the first part of this sentence into chunks to better understand the passage. The first chunk is, one morning when Gregor Samsa yeah, mm -hmm. woke, woke from his troubled dreams, which introduces the protagonist and the fact that he had a, a bad dream. The second chunk, he found himself transformed in the bed into a horrible vermin. We can infer that the, the dream set the stage for this event that followed since it had a direct effect on him what happened. The third chunk is he lay in his armor on his back, which gives us a description of what the vermin looks like. Finally, the fourth chunk is, and maybe this is going too far, but and finally the fourth chunk is, um, sorry, I lost my word. And, and he, if he lifted his head a little, he could see his brown belly. The description further gives us an idea of the, of the creature's physical attributes. By breaking down, by breaking down the sentence, this, the sentence down into chunks, we can better understand the context of the passage and connect the pieces of information from the text. 
Uh, to my mind, that's almost what a teacher might do, right? To kind of introduce the, uh, the how mm -hmm. to do this. And then, and then say, now it's your turn. Take, take mm -hmm. a few minutes, pause and break down the rest of the sentences in the passage. Invite us to do our own thing, our own think alouds. Well, yeah. Um, while we were using strategies we've discussed, it's, it's lost it a little bit here, right? But, um, and discuss chunking chunk by chunk. So I think you can get a sense of what we're trying to do there. Mm -hmm. um, that's really interesting. And even when Bob said it last week, that's how I taught that story. I would do it like a cliffhanger, read the first sentence, and we'd stop there and try to figure it out. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, really work with it like that. And then by the end of the story, Bob and uh, David and Marina, uh, the final question was always, is tell me, give me an, me an equation of the mathematics of metamorphosis by uh, Franz Kafka, they would have to, and they would have to use some sort of calculus or whatever they wanted to use to get a math equation as as a written sentence by the end of the story. I love teaching this story. I I love how much you love it. It's cool. <laughs> That's cool. I, I just want, and I just want to mention also that um, the because uh, I. I, I the details are fascinating to me, but it's the meta experience that I think we want to get to. And that is that um, um, Jack last week uh, suggested that as a, when he was a young reader and it was considered a slow reader, right? Um, that what he needed was somebody to get excited about the text and just tell him what he thought. So instead of giving a summary, right? So the reading buddy here kind of does that now. So we can be sure after reading this piece that Gregor S Semsa had a rather crazy experience, right? So hmm. um, it kind of it's it kind of is talking to the reader. Um, again, <laughs> um, I keep diving in and finding other ideas in, inside that book, and I'd love to talk to the others of that book. You know that book, um, and and have them help us think this through. But I sort of think we have the architecture, the hardware for doing this. But then the this that needs to be done is matching our theories about reading and thinking and inquiry with the thinking partners we come up with. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that was a big sentence. But, <laughs> but it, it was. But, you know, Paul, as you were talking and as we're we're talking and as we're writing and I'm saying, but we're on such a higher level than young people. So where, where does their thinking enter into the building of the thinking partners um, at their level? And is it just in the simplicity of the thinking partner knowing to break things down at particular levels? I'm, I'm, yeah, that, that's my thought. Mm. Yeah, and, and, and I think, and, and, and you know, we're kind of discovering this as we go, but I, I think the thinking partners become model, like we want, wouldn't want the kid or a student to do a breaking it down every time, but maybe for the first paragraph. And then maybe like, I'm really stuck on paragraph eight, so, hey, try the breaking down one, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of throwing it in once in a while. Or maybe, hey, just do it yourself this time, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thoughts, directions, ideas? <laughs> Paul, for my own benefit, can you re-up yeah. can you, uh, can you re or uh, the connection with Bob's? disciplinary work? You pulled this one up in connection with that, oh, and I, I, I think called, I lost that thread. I'm, understanding or so reading for understanding right and so the, the 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 prompts and the thinking partners are being guided by the sum of that framework is that yes the, yes got it well my understanding of the firm <laughs> yes. yes right okay yeah the yeah. big idea is yeah can we use existing research-based frameworks that have that, that have already been right you know ground truths or whatever pressure tested and and instead of 
relying on our own knowledge to write good prompts, use existing frameworks that can, yeah, be more likely to be helpful. It, as yeah. It's but both the analytic frameworks and the process, right? The process of think aloud is, yeah. right? Is yeah. So like pedagogy. Yes. Right? Can, can we get the thinking partners to have a pedagogy? Um, is, yeah. Or, or is it, can you get the thinking partner to reflect the documented pedagogy and integrate that into its rhetoric? Because it doesn't know anything. It's just a question of whether it delivers the assembly of things that are contextually related to the stuff you're putting in front of it. But it's exactly, the, it's the same exercise I'm trying to do with, with all the, the capacity of technology. Yeah, with the, you know, that's a key piece. And it was sort of where I was going with the the initial writing coach question, I wanted to create a writing coach that had the persona of Ken McCrory. Like, how do I get that thinking into the picture as a lens that guides the responses? But to your point, Bob, the same thing is, can that pedagogy be a very clear lens that's informing each and every comment in a way that's really robust and legit? Yeah. All yeah, right. That would be really good. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I want to end this with a challenge <laughs> okay. sure. of sorts. Um, so I, I, I started doing what, and I'm, I'm imagining, and I, I'm practicing it so that maybe students can do it too. Right? Um, hmm. uh, an online, it's a, it's private, but it's Paul's AI dialogue journal, right? Hmm. So I started over yeah. here. Here's my journal. And then here's AI's response to my journal. What? Right? <laughs> with, what with, cool. what with what prompt is the AI response? So um, that's that's within that that's in um, Youth Voices, <laughs> and we built lots of templates. Mm -hmm. um, this I, I can say what they are really fast, but mm -hmm. I mean it, it wouldn't matter it, yeah. for the for the quote unquote challenge here. You. Um, okay. It, you you come up with the prompt that you think would work best mm -hmm. for you. Um, right. I would want to suggest some to students. This one does say back. It does lurking. It does, and then you know. So it does Peter Albo kinds of um, response to the text. Um, on June third, I forget what I did, but I think you should try. Oh, I did. I did habits of mind. Right. Oh. So here, here's my. I I had. I asked again. These templates are set up on Youth Voices, so mm -hmm. but I ask it to look at look to see what habits of mind it sees in my writing, and the idea here is, and it's not totally working. I think that's okay. Is that that maybe on June fourth, I don't just start again. I look back at what AI gave me and I start there, right? So it, it kind of leads you on. Um, <laughs> What was this one? Uh, Grace, oh, I forget. Oh, oh, this one was asking. Um, oh, it was. I can't even remember. <laughs> Sorry, I think it was asking for the the wicked problem in, in in all of this, right? So I I think again it would be. One of the reasons that it would be nice to collect these things, it would be it, it would be nice to find out what the prompts we did for ourselves, right? As we as we did these journals. Oh, this one was looking for wicked problems. Mm. Anyway, so that's the idea. Uh, kind of set up a a journal for yourself, and use AI to to. In youth voices, we can do it. Yes, I, this will be set up in youth voices. But um, yeah, I have to just set up a template for it. But it would have to be, right? I, I don't want to, I just want it to, it would be an interesting thing if, I, I think it'd be an interesting way to, to learn about AI, to learn about how everybody's prompting differently and, just, and to have a journal as, as sort of the kernel for your thinking. Mm -hmm. um, and, and our thinking and our doing. And yeah. are responding to questions because everybody is asking me questions about how I'm using it and how I used it with students. We, you know, all my co all of my colleagues. So there, are, I just thought I'd throw that out there. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, I love the session, Paul, on 
the role of feedback to journaling. I have I have all of my journal entries as a as a first year teacher from the late eighties in hard copy. And I had a fantasy of developing a natural language processing strategy which could give first year teachers feedback on on their experience and growth over time. And it would be through the lens of reflective writing and it would look to identify different dispositions of learning from curiosity, creativity, to belonging and you know collaboration, all, all the cool things you could do. But it just would be so great if, if and I don't know if people write enough, to, you know, to, to make this a viable idea, but if people were writing regularly about their experience and they were able to get feedback on, got even answer, or my mentor teacher would write in the margins of my journal and answer questions that I had and give me feedback, different interactions with students that I was describing. But also that's the other loop of me having a sense of my growth over time that she never really addressed. But through a natural language processing feedback loop could be saying, look, your curiosity really went up in December based on the use of the following words and phrases and da, da, da. And, and it's just like, it's another way for me to get better, not only as a first year teacher, but as a learner and be aware of my processes. I remember you mentioning this a couple of years ago. Yeah, yeah. Cool, this cool. was, a, yeah. This but, yeah like, AI you know, might be, might be the way to get there. Well, it feels like it's it's very viable now, that's for sure. I mean, I can literally just put my journals into ChatGPT and say, you know, oh, I mean, I don't just want yeah. to limit on how much text I can put in there, but, you know, over time, what evidence of, you know, growth in the following areas is defined in the following ways do you see? And mm -hmm. it's doable. Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, let's talk about, let's talk about. Okay. okay next time as a journal yes okay yeah. yeah 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 that would be a great topic because there's some <laughs> there are some examples doing exactly that oh, that are floating around and david journals hello i'm sorry <laughs> i mean you're yeah okay cool cool yeah all right guys good. um let's do that next time talk to you all soon thanks yeah. a lot thank, thank you very much thanks everybody stay Bye. safe paul wear a mask again when you go i, I have been yeah Green. Hey, Paul, yeah. Linda, I was just talking to Linda Friedrich. She really wants, uh -huh. and she's like, good, she, good. Yeah, I, I saw her name on there on that book now. She, well, <laughs> yeah. yeah, she 